video. Uh, so if you haven't been to the channel yet or uh, this is your first time back in a while, welcome to the channel or welcome back. Uh, so today is going to be something a little different from what I've been doing recently. Um, what I'm going to do today is I want to share uh, a little bit of what I do within the, the course designer. Um, I suppose to help create um, the RCRs that I have now again not going to turn around and say I'm the best designer out there, but I definitely think that um, there are some processes uh, that I use that could be of use to, to anyone who's looking to, you know, create their local club or uh, or any of their favorite courses in the world, or even just to, to create a, a fantasy course. I mean, some of these principles um, can definitely be used. Not all of them. Some of them might seem a little pointless if you're not building an RCR. So, Essentially, the focus is on RCR here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get straight into the course designer. Uh, strangely enough, um, the amount of people I talk to uh, that play the game, enjoy the game, have never actually seen what lies beyond the course designer button. So if you've never ventured into it, here's what we have. So you've your uh, new course, so if you wanted to start uh, from scratch, unpublished courses, those are you know in-progress works. Uh, import legacy course that's basically any courses if you play TGC1 you can bring them over and publish courses are essentially all the courses that you've published within the game speaks for itself pretty straightforward so what we're gonna focus on today is basically the setup so I'm gonna go through uh, how I go about setting up the the plot uh, just a couple of different things that um, that I do uh, I suppose to get the the overall plot ready for the design that's going to be on there. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start off with a new course. So first tip number one is not to actually name the course what you want the course to be called. The reason for something like that is down to um, when you want to go and publish it later on. You know, if you want to test it out or have a few friends test it just to get some feedback. Um, what's going to happen is if you so let's say for example you're building sawgrass we're just going to go with sawgrass there and then you decide to keep calling it sawgrass with all those different um test versions then you're just going to create this massive pile up of sawgrass there and the likelihood is then when it comes around to publishing the the full version it's just going to get so lost among all the other different sawgrasses that are there so definitely a good habit to get in just um just to give it a, a different name so what we're going to do here is we're just going to call it the course designer series so that way i know for a fact uh what course i'm going to be or what file i'm going to end up opening back up so oh do 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 it was with his welsh flag yeah not a chance not a chance morning Ireland all the way. So just in case you're wondering what that's in reference to, uh, Phil there is just chatting about we're having a, um, a society through the, the four nations. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have uh, myself representing Ireland. Uh, so you've enforced her 3891 who's going to be representing Wales, as you can tell by the flag. Uh, so early 1981, which is Lee Walker, is going to be uh, Scotland and Tim Wilson, UK, representing the English. So it's essentially all against all and you know at the end of the day may the best nation win which we all know is going to be ireland anyway um but <laughs> i'm sure phil lee and tim are, are going to make that as tough as possible so we have that um course name set up there so what we want to do then is just go further into some of the course options so we have a, a number of different themes that are available um all depending on what type of course you're looking for so if you're looking for uh, the kind of deserty um native american type style uh design then you're looking for something like uh desert you're looking for the tropical maybe or even the the step theme as well which is over here um which will give you some good options then obviously if you're looking for something a bit uh, mountainous like the alps uh the swiss one here then there's a couple of other ones here, like you've the Boreal, the Countryside, Delta, Rustic. They're all, uh, and Harvest as well, I should say. All very, very good themes. All tend to be, uh, all tend to be, like, I suppose, run quite similar. The only difference is you'll have uh, some trees will obviously be different across. So it's, uh, the, 
the type of items that are, are tied to the specific theme are going to be different. Um, and then obviously then you have the Highlands theme there, which is more suited for your Lynx courses. So if you're looking to uh, to build anything there like you know Turnberry, St Andrews, any of those Lynx courses, Highlands is the one you're looking for, simply because it's set up with uh, some nice strong winds there. So if you went to go build a Lynx course in a different theme, one, it wouldn't look right, and two, you wouldn't have that... Um, that accuracy in the wind uh you woke up from dreaming yet to be honest I, I i didn't wake up that long ago but uh not dreaming buddy not dreaming so we're going to start here i'm going to pick the countryside theme is the is the one we're going to work with today uh so of course that i've been uh it, to be honest i was originally going to scrap it uh, and go with another project but the fact that laying it out was actually as easy as it was um i'm going to go ahead and use uh, Celtic Manor as a template for this today. So, we've picked our theme. Now we want to do is basically empty the canvas. Uh, I like to work off a clean slate. That way, everything that is going to be on the course is something that I've put on there itself. Like at the moment, you can't really see it from this angle, but there's uh, there's quite a few trees, rocks, hills, slopes, bunkers, holes, water. You can see the water actually. That's pretty obvious. Um, and what I like to do is just completely remove all of it um, because essentially I'm not going to be able to use any of it. There's no guarantee that a certain slope or a certain hole or a certain pond is going to be exactly as I want it. Um, so I just go ahead, remove everything, remove the 18 holes. And what that does then is you'll, you won't see it at the moment, but you'll see it in a second when I apply it. Uh, bunkers gone, fairway width down to zero. Green size, I actually like to keep maybe in around five just because it's it's nice to be able to see where the flag is um if you took off the the green size then you'd actually just be left with uh, a flag and to be honest finding that would be an awful lot of fun so we'll apply that and you'll see all those changes there we go okay so now we're just going to get stuck in so you can see there even though we've got rid of essentially everything there still is um, some slopes, some bumps, some water, and we're just going to go ahead and, and essentially get rid of all that. So the the next thing I do is, like, depending on the course that you're building, you're going to have a certain amount of elevation change. I mean, not every single golf course is as flat as a pancake. So what I like to do is I like to give myself uh, a little bit of a buffer zone to work with, simply because each plot has its own uh, water table so i can show you that quickly here if we go into just sculpt then landscape raise just pick any random shape there and what we're going to do is just drop down and you can see there all the water starts to appear so it's only a couple of feet down um but we're already hitting the water table so i like to just give myself a little bit of room um so what i'll do is in this the sculpt land option go to landscape flatten down to the very last page uh, I like to pick that nice square one here because it's very precise you can see how thin that line is um, and I want to make sure I cover all the edges of the side as well just so it kind of flows more naturally and we're going to want to raise this up quite a bit actually I like to give myself a, a little bit more room than I actually need it's a little bit overzealous but again it just it stops us having issues further down the line um, so now that we've gone ahead and raised that flattened it out you can see there that there's essentially nothing to that plot of land right there what we want to do is flatten everything else with it so we just go back into the flatten and all we need to do is just make sure that the land that we've just raised takes up most of the uh, most of the brush and what that does is it brings everything else up to meet that height so you can see there just a little bit of the time and what it's doing is it's just bringing that lower level right up to meet us and essentially securing the fact that everything is going to be as flat as the rest of it okay so that's pretty much it done there um now obviously if we zoom out we can see quite clearly that the plot of land we're on is actually quite raised up into what's around us but go down to ground level 
doesn't really look much um much different to be honest so it, handy to have so uh each theme also comes with a clubhouse i don't i never like them and to be honest they're usually always the wrong one so you can see up there in the top left corner you have a little orange mark that little orange mark is pretty much going to be your uh, your plant meter so that runs the whole way across the screen and that's going to be the amount of room that you have to place objects on your course so when i go ahead and delete the clubhouse you can see that that orange line has now disappeared meaning that there's nothing here just us <laughs> sounds kind of lonely but it's <laughs> it's all good that's exactly what we're looking for so once we've flattened everything out it's it's all pretty much set up then to to start the layout process and the layout process is basically just mapping your course out so like i said we're going to choose um celtic manor as a as a template for today uh, again just because i already have it laid out it was it was actually quite a an easy process so we're going to work using uh, using that one so to start with what we also need to make sure is that the the course we're actually building is going to fit into the plot so for example you know your standard golf course tends to it tends to go around in a circle or it tends to be quite bunched together you know you might have the first and the second will head out in one direction then the third comes back the fourth comes back the fifth kind of plays in around the clubhouse and then you go out the other side and it all seems to kind of loop in around each other where uh some other courses then like the likes of st andrews like the likes of wentworth tend to head out in one direction and come back against it and those are the ones that you need to watch out for because those are the ones that you might actually struggle to to fit in because with the plot itself so if we go into sculpt land here we have our measuring tool which is going to be massive it's probably the most important tool for building rcrs we'll just take it from one edge to the other roughly and it's about 2200 just short 2200 yards so you'll get uh you should get roughly you could squeeze four decent power fives into there but essentially a front nine equates to about 3600 ish yards so you need to make sure that your course plot is going to fit thankfully celtic manor does um so we can just get to work straight away so the other side of it is as well is that some people have their own methods of building courses some of them will purposely use google earth for you know plotting out each individual specific point and you know that's absolutely brilliant but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to work with um some very simple steps some things that i suppose don't make the process sound as tedious as it actually can be if you want to make it that way so what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of different apps so some of the good ones i think out there are the likes of 18 birdies really really good for getting your distances getting your elevation changes absolutely brilliant uh, google earth pro is obviously a really good one to go with um then you also have do 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 do, do blue golf as well as actually another one very very good um but to be honest if you're going to use it, it's probably better to use it on a computer you get a, a bit more information from there so what we're going to do to start with is the first hole at celtic manor so the first hole at celtic manor measures 439 yards that is from actually yeah 439 yards and that is a direct line from your t to your green okay so what we'll do is we're going to just pick a point in around here and we're going to use that measuring tool okay and all you're going to do is just measure out that line Four hundred and thirty-nine. There's a little bit extra there, but we're not too worried about that at the moment. So that is essentially the first hole from T to the green. Now, what we want to do is obviously there's going to be a certain amount of dog legs are on certain holes. So we what we want to do is we want to make sure we incorporate those down legs as our down legs, dog legs, as uh, as accurately as possible. So the easiest way to do this is actually if we go ahead and add the hole straight away just after measuring it out so if we come back we go to create add create holes now this isn't going to be permanent this is just to give us uh, a good reference point for a dog leg now with with also with laying out your holes there's you'll have a point for the t box you'll have a point 
for your dog leg, which is that point there. And then the next one here is for the green. Okay, so that's your first hole laid out. Um, now, obviously, that rough isn't going to be as accurate as, as I want it to be. So I can go straight to the rough settings and just remove it entirely. Okay, so we've got a tee box, we've got a green, now we need to create a dog leg. So going back to the, the app I'm using at the moment, which is 18 birdies, there's a dog leg at 249 yards from the tee, 207 to the green. So what we'll do is we'll come back to this very first point we, we started with, and you can see there straight away, it's prompting you to add a distance marker. We're gonna go ahead and click on yes, and we're gonna go out 249 yards. Now what you should also see on top of the screen is that we have a distance to the tee, but we also have a distance to the green. So we know we need to be 249, which is what we are at the moment, but the green there is saying that we're 213 yards away from it. We need to be 207. So what we do is we just start moving it across you can see there that number starts to come down 209 208 207 perfect so there's our reference point for our dog leg now what we do to get the hole shaped correctly we come back to the tee box we just hover around a little bit let the the tees actually highlight up i'm going to click delete and we're going to delete the hole sounds a bit counterproductive but it just it makes that process so much easier to get that specific point as your dog like and it ensures accuracy which is the main thing um, so what we do then again is now that we have all our points what we can do is just go ahead and relay down that hole but instead of going on a direct line to the green we're going to go over use this reference point here which is 249 and 207 There you go, there we have our first dog leg. So that's essentially the waypoint uh, for the first hole. Now obviously the rough has come back down there. We can, I'm actually gonna go ahead and show you how to remove that completely. So if you don't like having that rough there and want that gone, just come the whole way back out, go to your course settings, go to your rough settings and just reduce that down. And what that will do is that will actually carry it across every single hole. So when you go ahead and add the second hole, third hole, fourth hole, it's going to be that exact same process. So now that we have our first hole laid down, now what I'm going to do is show you how to go ahead and continue on that second hole. So, so to ensure that the course actually maintains its flow, that you know you have the first hole going to run directly into the second hole over here instead of you know your first hole here your second hole just takes off in a weird direction over here your third hole over here so we, we don't want to for it to essentially lose its flow we want it to actually maintain that so what we do is we're actually going to use the, t the first tee box as our reference point so using that app again we can see straight away um, the second hole is looking uh, just beyond the first green to the left hand side so what we want to do is based on the measurements we have here it's 453 yards from the tee 60 yards from the green so 453 yards and we just want to move it over move the too far bring that back there so that's going to be your second tee box and what we want to do from there then is just to ensure that it's taking also the correct line what we're going to do is we'll use that first tee again as a reference point for the green so again using that app I'm going to find the the second green there which is a thousand and eleven yards and 655 so zoom in a thousand and eleven 
No. What we need to do is just to move it across. And what that's going to do is just create that 655 yards away. Nearly there. There we go. Perfect. And there you have it. There's the line for the second hole. And we're just going to do the exact same process again. Straight line from that tee to that green. And then from there we can get the dog leg from it. So I know, obviously having done, uh, done this a couple of times, that I know directly that that is essentially bang on. 607 yards is the exact distance of the, the second hole from tee to green. So again, just repeating it, going to do the same thing again. We know that the dog leg, it does, it's only a slight dog leg, but it's there all the same, is 298307. So what we're going to do first, again, just to ensure that we have that accuracy, is just to create the hole. Now, if you want, you don't even have to put the midway point down here. You can just double click it on the green. So there we go. So we know we need to go, what was it, 307, 298. So 307. Too far there. Actually, I think I got that measurement wrong. I sure did. 307 300 <laughs> makes an awful lot more sense and there we go so it's only the slightest of dog legs that's all it is now we can come back highlight the, uh, the tea box now as you can see there i haven't gone as accurate there to be honest i'm just this is merely just to showcase um normally when i when i'm actually laying out i will be that specific with it but i'm just i suppose what i'm really trying to achieve here is just to show you the uh the overall process so we'll go ahead and delete the hole i sure do right back out a little bit just to give some room from the markers create the hole again and this time we bring the dog leg into play this is also handy because it's the waypoint that's used for your camera flybys. So, for example, if you have a waypoint that's like doesn't even fly overneath the fairway or doesn't even really show the hole, then that's that's an issue that some players won't be too happy about. So, it's it's good just to make sure that you do follow those um, as you should. So there we go. That is essentially the first two holes of Celtic Manor, and all you need to do is just continue that process so the first hole was perfect then we use the first hole for the second hole now what you're going to do is for the third hole you're going to use the second hole so use that second tee box as a reference point for your distance to that third tee box your distance to that third green and what ends up happening is obviously you're going to get the the overall flow and the map of the course but what you'll also get as well is that sometimes because courses kind of intertwine with each other a bit and sometimes you know the third hole might run quite close to the 11th hole the actual designer might pick up the nearest point to show you so you may end up be using let's say for the third hole you could end up using like the second tee box as a reference but then for the green you could end up being using the um the first green so it does change all you've got to do is just make sure you're aware of it and uh, and pay attention to detail on it. But essentially, in terms of the setup, that's pretty much it. All you need to do from this point on is to just continue with that on. Second hole, third hole, fourth hole, fifth hole. And what you'll end up seeing there is you'll get that full map of the course. And I'm going to show you exactly what that should look like now. So we're just going to save and exit on our, our progress there. And I'm just going to bring you in quickly to show you uh, what I've been doing with uh, Celtic Manor at the moment. So, 
it's going to be a lot of lines. There's going to be a lot of lines and measuring points and everything. You can start to see it there. Like I was saying, that measuring tool is essentially going to be the, one of the most important uh, tools you have in the designer. So there we have the, the eighth hole there. And we're using a couple, a couple of different reference points there. Like we have the seventh coming down, the seventh T box is being used for the eighth. Then the green. Um, I can't remember where that green came from. It was over here. That green actually came from the T box as well, actually. That, that, that one worked out okay. But then there was a couple of others like the, the 11th uh, and stuff that were used from different reference points. So essentially that's what it's going to look like when you're done. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of lines. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of measuring really going on there. And then as you kind of start to work on each individual hole, you'll start to see way more lines, way more little points uh, on the course for when you're plotting it out. But that's coming later for now. It's just about the setup. It's just about getting the plot of the land out. Uh, once you have the plot of the land out, then from there, then you'll be moving to the next step, which is to go ahead and, and get the actual, uh, the fairways laid out, the rough laid out and and then moving on from there as well okay so that's pretty much it for me uh if you have any questions at all just pop them in the comment thread below um and i'd be happy to to answer what i can i hope you do get something from these videos there's going to be a couple of different episodes in the series we're going to go through um so the planting of your fairways working in the rough uh best way to do your bunkers and to sculpt them to make them more uh more lifelike um Oh, cheers, Phil. Uh, what we're also going to do then is work on sculpting of the greens. I suppose then the different sculpt, uh, sculpting tools that you can use then for, I suppose, creating your elevation changes, your slopes, etc. That's all going to come um, pretty soon. But episode one, just a setup. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a lovely day. Happy designing. And we'll chat to you later, guys. Bye.